Welcome CCV, I wanna invite you to stand to your feet. Let's sing to the God, the creator of all. Come on. Welcome everybody here tonight. It is so good to have you. You guys sound amazing. We're going to continue to sing in a few minutes, but uh, right now you can take your seats. If you are joining us for the very first time, whether you're here in person 
or you're online, I want to say welcome. We're honored. We'd love to connect with you on campus. You can find us right after the service at the new to CCV tables located out in the courtyard. And if you're online, jump on that chat feature. We would love to hear from you. Hey, next weekend, we're going to wrap up the series we're in, the rhino, the bison, and the lamb. And I'm telling you, it's going to be incredible. We have a special guest Rich Froning with us. He is a four-time fittest man on earth, eight-time CrossFit champion, and he is going to be here joining with us with a very inspiring message. You don't want to miss it. I want to just challenge you. Don't come alone. Perfect time to invite somebody. Hey, today we're doing things a little bit differently. We are going to jump right now into our message and hear from our teaching pastor, Mark Moore. If this is your first time to CCV, we don't normally have livestock on stage, <laughs> but we thought it would be appropriate for this series, the rhino, the bison, and the lamb. There's, uh, there's some important lessons to learn from animals about growing our faith. And so we're just looking at the characteristic of these animals to try to figure out how can we be better people, specifically better Christians. And last week was the rhino, this bold faith, like bull rushing through brick walls. I know that's attractive to a lot of people. In fact, most guys that go, that's the faith I want to have. But until you learn the dependence of a lamb, you will never have the boldness of a rhino. One of the things that the early church learned early on is the need for their shepherd. And that's why on the catacombs in Rome, in the earliest years of the church, they painted this image of Jesus with the lamb on his shoulders because they knew that without the dependence of the lamb, they would never have the boldness of a rhino. And so today we just wanna talk about the characteristics of this little guy and what he has to teach us about being a good Christian. And I'll tell you why that's so important to me. This last month, uh, I got COVID. And I kind of pride myself of being healthy and kind of tough. It, if I were to be honest with you, I act like I'm tougher than I am. Did anyone else? And I want you to believe that I'm stronger than I am. But COVID laid me out for three consecutive weeks. I was flat on my back. And I, I just learned, you know, I, like I'm no rich froning. You say, who's that? He is the four-time fittest man of the world and the eight-time champion uh, of CrossFit. He's gonna be our guest next week. You don't wanna miss it. But I, look, I, I know, I'm not a rich froning, but for a middle-aged guy, I'm in pretty good shape. I know what some of you are thinking. Middle age? You gonna live past 100? <laughs> I might, just to spite you. Anyway, um, I, I got COVID so, it hit me hard. Now, I know a lot of people, have died from COVID. It's, it, is a, it is a more serious illness than I thought until I got it. And some of you are gonna try to console me and say, look, you know, it's not that you're not tough, it just hits different people differently, okay? Save it. Because I gave it to my wife. She lost her smell for four days. Boo hoo. <laughs> but the lesson that I learned was that we are more vulnerable than any of us imagine. And Jesus knew that. In fact, the whole sermon is resting on one verse in Luke 10. Jesus said, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Not just sheep, lambs. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. I'm sending you out. We're not gonna do anything with this until the end of the message, okay? But put that in your pocket, save it for later. Right now, I wanna talk about lambs. This might surprise you but I have never really cared for livestock personally. Like I'm not a farmer, I'm not a shepherd, big surprise. So I leaned into one who was, a literal shepherd wrote a book called The Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. 
And he started describing the nature of lambs. And you probably know this. When Jesus called you a lamb, it's not a compliment. <laughs> and I want to share four characteristics of lamb that will teach us how to be better Christians. Here's characteristic number one. Sheep are anxious. And they should be. They don't have claws. They don't have fangs. They don't run really fast. Sheep are predators like dream animal. They're so vulnerable. They should be anxious. You know what that reminds me of? Uh, 2020. Anxiety disorders increased by 800%. A lot of us are acting like lambs, so easily triggered, so easily thrown off our game. In fact, a lamb, if it's, if it's in the field, I learned this from the shepherd, a lamb is in the field, you got a flock of, of, of sheep there. If a jackrabbit jumps up, like it's a jackrabbit, is it no more harmful than a, a lamb? Jackrabbit jumps up, the sheep get scared, and the sheep just starts running. And then the other sheep are going, hey, he's running. I wonder if we should be running. So they all start to run and go, what are we running for? Well, I don't know, but I'm scared to death. That reminds me of our society all last year. And the Bible says in the most famous Psalm, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. You know that sheep don't lay down naturally unless they're really comfortable. It normally requires a shepherd to calm the sheep before they'll ever lie down. And I'm not saying that you're a sheep, although we all are. I'm just saying if you're anxious right now, having trouble sleeping maybe, or easily triggered, maybe you might want to examine the possibility that you're not as close to the shepherd as you need to be. So that's number one, sheep are anxious. Here's number two, and I hate to even say this to you because I don't want to insult anybody. So I'll just say it about me, and if it applies, you can apply it to you. Sheep are dumb. I mean capital D-U-M. Dumb. They love bad habits. So if you take a sheep and you put them in a field, they will walk in a rut until it's like knee deep. And as they're going along, they come to a puddle of water, and so they'll drink from that puddle of water, even though it's got parasites in it. And then they'll pee in the puddle. And the sheep behind him will come up right behind him and say, well, he took a drink, so I'll take a drink. He took a leak, so I'll take a leak. I mean, and there it goes. It is essential that the shepherd keeps the flock moving or they will destroy themselves and the field that they're in. Did you know that sheep are so dumb? They will graze a field to the roots of the plants, totally destroying the field and killing themselves in the process. Does this sound familiar to anyone? If any of you made a bad decision and you find yourself surrounded by wolves or isolated or all alone, and you go, I have no idea how I got here. I do, because I've watched sheep. Sheep are not browsers, they're grazers. So what that means is their head is to the ground and they just keep eating and eating and eating, paying no attention to where they're going, paying no attention to the sheep around them or their surroundings. Some sheep are so dumb, they'll just graze and like walk off a cliff and the shepherd has to come rescue them from the ledge. Or they'll get surrounded by wolves and they'll go, I don't know how I got here. Or they'll find themselves isolated away from the flock and they're lost. Jesus told multiple parables about lost sheep for this very reason. And there was not a man or a woman in Jesus' audience that had not been on a hunt for a lost sheep. They are that dumb. And I guess if we admit this, we will better posture ourselves for health. Peter said this in his letter, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We need this message. Because if we're gonna have the faith of a rhino, we need to have the dependence of the lamb. So uh, sheep can be anxious, sheep can be dumb. Third, sheep can be sickly. There's no other flock animal that's more prone to more diseases and sicknesses. Bot flies, nasal flies, parasites, abrasions, ticks. 
Sheep have to be, not just, you don't just have to watch the flock, you have to examine each individual lamb. Now here's the way you do that. A shepherd has two primary instruments. One is the staff, it's the tall stick with a crook on the end of it. That's how he gently guides his sheep. Or if he needs to, he'll hook it around the shoulders and pull the sheep back. But if the sheep gets too far away, he uses his rod. Now the rod is, think of a billy club with like a knot on the end of it. It's carefully chosen by the shepherd and they get really good with it. Its primary purpose is to defend against predators like lions and wolves, tigers and bears, oh my. But if he needs to, he'll use it on a lamb that's doing something stupid. Like if, if two sheep start to fight or if one sheep starts to walk away, with deadly accuracy, the shepherd can go, boom, and nail that sucker in the back of the head. Boom. And the sheep says, ouch, that felt bad. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Another thing that sheep do, as the shepherd examines the sheep with the rod, that's the purpose of the rod, he will part the wool back to look at the skin for abrasions. And if the shepherd can't get to the skin, that he will be blinded from what is ailing a sheep. And that actually is where we get the phrase, pulling the wool over my eyes. God wants to know you. He wants to see you. He wants to know what is hurting you so that he, as a good physician, can provide a solution. Another thing that sheep do, and this, I, I wouldn't have believed this had I not actually seen it in a video. Sheep get cast. And what that means is they, they get on their back, they lay in a field, and maybe roll into a, into a ditch or into a rut. They can't get up. They're stuck. Sometimes they're stuck because their wool is so heavy it drags them down. Sometimes they're stuck because they're with a lamb. Sometimes they're stuck because they're just fat. So they lay in the field with their feet, all four flailing, going, ah, ah. They're calling a shepherd, but they're also calling a predator. And whether they live or whether they die is determined by who gets there first. Sheep are so vulnerable. And I, I look around where we are now and I just see so many people that are vulnerable. Marriages that are breaking up and just, ah. Kids that are wayward or, or you don't know where they are, period. There's a lot of people within our body who are, they're cast right now. Like literally, I was on my back for three weeks with COVID. And some of you going, that's nothing. You should see my life. And it's not physical, it's spiritual. I'm on my back and I'm screaming for help. But if the enemy gets here, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. And I want to share a passage with you that is so important because some people think, well, I'm healthy, I won't get COVID. It doesn't matter if you're healthy. You know that the sheep who get cast are often the healthiest sheep? If you're fat, that's good for a sheep. Or if you have a lamb, that's, that's healthy for a sheep. Or if you have thick wool, that's good. Like some of the healthiest sheep get cast. And that could be you if you're not aware. And the reason I'm grateful for the COVID that got me was it humbled me. And I said, I, I am not only vulnerable physically, I'm vulnerable spiritually. First Corinthians gives this warning. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. It's a warning for all of us. Life can hit any of us and take us by surprise and take us by storm. And that's why the shepherd has to take such specific care of sheep. Now, if you, if you are in that state right now, maybe you're cast, and you're thinking, I am so embarrassed about this. I, I, I'm filing for bankruptcy. I am so embarrassed. Like God must be furious with me. No. That's not how a shepherd responds. Or, or maybe you're sleeping in another room and you're thinking, I, I should be better than this. God, God must be so disappointed in me. No. That's the enemy whispering in your ear that you should feel shame. Your heavenly father and your good shepherd, he doesn't feel anger or, or vengeance against you. He cares for you. And when a shepherd finds a lamb that's lost or cast or sick or surrounded by wolves, he will defend it to the death. 
God is never more present than when you are most vulnerable. And somebody needs to hear that today because you come in looking around at all these other Christians who seem to have all their life together. None of us do. We all need the shepherd. And the sooner you learn dependence on the shepherd, the sooner that you can have the faith of the rhino. So far, it's kind of been a Debbie Downer up in here. Like, sheep are stupid, and sheep are, are anxious, and sheep are sickly. There's a fourth characteristic of sheep. You want to hear it? Sheep are valuable. And I don't just mean that sheep are valuable because of the, the, the wool that they provide or the meat that they provide. Sheep are valuable to the shepherd relationally. Believe it or not, Jews considered dogs unclean. So when Jesus gave this verse, there was no Jew that owned a pet dog. And I know if you have a pet dog, you go, man, dogs are awesome animals. I agree. But they didn't have pet dogs. You know what they had? Pet lambs. And you can see why. I mean, when I put that lamb on my shoulders, he just literally took his head and leaned it into mine. It's like, I need you to comfort me. I need to know that life is okay. If you've ever had a dog or a pet that you just loved and said, you know, they loved me back, then you can understand why God loves sheep. If we love him back, he's going to take care of us. Sheep are valuable, but sheep are most valuable when they're in the flock. Now, some people call a group of sheep a herd, and that's not wrong, but technically they're a flock just like birds. Why would you call birds a flock and sheep a flock? Because both of them are designed by God to move synchronously together. Sheep love to be with other sheep. I wish you could all have been backstage. We had this little lamb in a room. It had a full-length mirror. When the lamb saw another lamb in the mirror, it went right up to it. It was hilarious. We need each other. And the concern that I have for us right now is that because of COVID, we have isolated. And, and look, rightly so. Some of you are watching online right now because you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a situation where it would not be safe for you to return. Total respect for that. But a lot of people, my fear is that a lot of people got used to watching church online. And sheep love ruts. And you stay in that rut, not because it's what's best for you or best for the body, but because that's what you're used to. And I just want to say, if you're able to come back, come back. If you're able to come to one of our campuses, what I've noticed is that when people return for the first time, they often break into tears because they don't know what they've been missing. And maybe you're watching online because you've never gone to church, any church, let alone this church, and you're thinking, this is, you know, I'm, I'm investigating, I'm seeking it out, fair enough. This is the no judgment zone up in here. Keep watching online, but at the point where you are comfortable, come home. Because what you will find is there is incredible power in the community. God made us like birds, like fish, like lambs, to need each other and lean into each other. There's another thing about the flock that a lot of times people don't pay attention to because they read the Bible, how the shepherd goes out and finds the lost sheep. Absolutely true. And if you're lost right now, maybe it's lost financially or lost because of a sickness or lost because of a relationship that's gone south. If you're lost right now, listen, Jesus will come and meet you where you are. He will leave the 99 in the field to find you. That's true. But it is also true that the greatest access you have to the shepherd is in the flock because that's where he spends the bulk of his time. And when you come and gather, whether it's a neighborhood group or whether it's a weekend uh, service, Jesus just shows up. He has a way of invading our space so that we can meet him face to face in a powerful way. And you look at shepherds all around the world, most shepherds, drive their sheep. They get these dogs to chase them around. They'll drive the sheep from one pasture to another. Not Jesus. See, he's a Palestinian shepherd. And in the Middle East, they don't drive sheep. They lead sheep. 
And the way you lead sheep is every sheep is given a name. And the shepherd will call his sheep by name and they will respond to the shepherd when he calls them by name. Psalm 95 says this, he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. And I feel like I'm talking to someone here who needs to know that God is calling you. He's calling you by name. And maybe you're sitting on a campus or you're watching on demand and you, you sense some draw to God to come back home. That's not me. That is the Holy Spirit calling you, inviting you back home. He's not gonna shame you. He's not gonna beat you. He's not embarrassed by you and he hasn't given up on you. He's calling you, come home. And so are we. We welcome you here into the community of God's people because it's not just helpful for me, you may be helpful for me and I may be helpful for you. I just want you to know this. So could you just huddle up for just a second? God doesn't just love you. He really, really likes you. And he wants you to be safe in the community of God's people. I'm reminded of a, of a time Jesus was with his disciples and he's like he always is. He's, he's teaching, he's healing, he's preaching. He gets dog tired. And he says to his disciples, we need some R&R. &R, so get in the boat, let's go to the other side of the lake. It's a nine mile uh, trip across the lake. And we, we just need some time alone to ourselves. The people on shore see him go in a boat across the lake. They don't have a boat, so they run to the next shipping dock. It's just a couple miles up the road, and they get there and say, have you seen Jesus? Uh, no, have you seen Jesus? Yeah, he was at our town, and now he left in a boat, and we thought maybe he stopped here. No, he hasn't stopped here. Let's go check the next dock. And so all the people from the first dock and the second dock go to the third dock looking for Jesus. And then the fourth dock and the fifth dock and the sixth dock. And they ran around the lake. It's about 14 miles around the lake on foot. And they beat Jesus to the other side. Can you believe it? And when he comes out of the boat, he pulls up to the shore, steps onto the shore. He sees a crowd of people. The Bible says it was 5,000 men plus women and children. And yes, that was when Jesus fed them. But I want to read to you the very first thing Jesus said. It, it wouldn't be what I say. Like if I'm exhausted and you are really demanding, I, I'm really not as nice a person as you might think. Here's what Jesus said when he saw the crowd. He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he taught them and he healed them and he fed them. That's exactly what he wants to do with you. St. Augustine in the fourth century said this, O oh God, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our souls are restless, searching till they find their rest in thee. There's a man on our surprise campus. His name is Todd Stewart. And what I've been talking about, <laughs> this is his story. My name is Todd Stewart, and uh, my wife and I, we attend CCV Surprise. We fell in love with the culture, we fell in love with the, the, the church, the family. Wow, we're really high this morning, guys. In 2017, things got real. Sorry, right, Lord, we got this. The same but a thing, we've been through this before. I found myself in the hospital. I found myself on a gurney. I had been transported by ambulance. My blood pressure was through the roof. Um, the doctor said, hey, we've got some really great news. You haven't had a stroke, but, and as soon as I heard that word, it was like the air just got sucked right out of the room. And they said, you have a nodule in your left adrenal gland and you need to follow up with your doctors. All right, so that part of the is done. And then it had a name, uh, pheochromocytoma. Three to four out of every one million people are diagnosed with it, and usually it's after they're gone. 
ultimately, the only thing that can resolve it is surgery. But the surgery itself is so risky. I looked at my wife and I shook my head and I said, really? So I could die in surgery or I could die tying my shoes. I had to go on leave. We lost 40% of our income. Then COVID hit. My wife works in the healthcare field, so her hours were reduced. We were terrified. And I was just so dead inside. I didn't go to back to church. I didn't go back to neighborhood group. I was surrounded by people that just wanted to love on me and I wouldn't let them in. I felt comfortable in my misery and the lies that I was being fed. And then God just showed up in such a huge way. I was at a place in my life where my life, my physical life was threatened. And the only thing I could ask myself was, do I really trust God? When I got that diagnosis, I could not say that. The only thing I could think of was my wife, my kids, my job, my home. All the things that I knew that I could see. And then God reminded me, did you not remember it's not about what you see, it's what you don't see. And that's what changed. I had to start partnering with him. And I found myself back in scripture. I found myself reaching for my Bible again. And his word became so alive. Everything from you're adopted, you're loved, you're cherished, you're royalty. His promises became so real. I've been blessed by a church that is the hands and feet of Jesus. People in my neighborhood group, in my campus, that never gave up. Obviously, there's still some fear because every day is always a new day. But we knew that the only way we were going to survive it was if we surrendered it, because this is something that we just couldn't control. Who knows? Who's to say that God isn't miraculous enough that I could wake up one morning, not have, a, not have PCC anymore, which would be an amazing blessing, or, wake up one more day to love someone, to serve someone, and to bless someone. Love you. Have a good day. Remember, breathe deep. God's got it. Okay? Love you. That's a powerful story. And one thing that Todd said that really stuck with me is the only way to survive it is to surrender it. And I don't know what wolves are surrounding you. Maybe you're lost on a ledge by yourself. Maybe you're cast and just calling out for a savior. But the only way to survive it is to surrender it. Here's a question for me. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. You walk in here, maybe this is the first time you've ever been here. Can I trust that shepherd? Because there's a lot of shepherds that abuse the sheep. They, they use them for their own good. God doesn't want something from you. He wants something for you. 
And the reason we can trust this shepherd is because he is the only shepherd who became a lamb. When Jesus began his ministry, he went to get baptized by John the Baptist. And there in the Jordan River, there's hundreds of people. And when John saw Jesus, he pointed at him, shouted at the crowd, look, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And when we hear a lamb, we think of a cute little animal, not a Jew. When they heard the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, they thought, ah, that's the Passover lamb. When Israel became a nation, the night they became a nation, freed from bondage in Egypt, they had already experienced nine plagues in Egypt, and a tenth one was coming. It was the worst of all. The death of a firstborn child. And God said, I don't want any of you to lose a child. So here's how to protect your family. Take a lamb, and you kill it, and you're gonna eat it as a Passover meal along with unleavened bread, along with wine, but the blood of the lamb you paint on the doorposts of your house. And every year, year over year, they celebrated this Passover meal, the same menu on the table. So did Jesus. The night before he died, he sat at a table with the lamb, with the unleavened bread, with the wine. And he said to his disciples, this is me. You understand, this, I am the lamb. The shepherd became the lamb so that we could go free. We don't celebrate that once a year. We celebrate it every single week with these simple elements. As you came in the room, this, you might have picked one of these up. If you didn't get one, I, I want you to hold these. Don't, don't, don't open them just yet, because we're gonna take it all together. If you didn't get one, we wanna give you some time to go back to the back of the room and, and get one. If you're at home, feel free to go and get some crackers and some juice or some wine, whatever you have, to represent the body and blood of Jesus. I wanna tell you why we take this every week here. If we could go back to the 23rd Psalm, I wanna read verse four, it's familiar. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you wanna survive surrounded by wolves, get on the shoulders of the shepherd. I wanna take a few minutes just to meditate, give people time to go get the emblems, and then we'll take this together. Why don't you move toward the shepherd right now? On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. I want to remind you the verse that we started with. Jesus said, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. And we focused on the lambs among wolves. I want to focus for just a minute on I'm sending you out. 
You know our mission at CCV is win, train, send. This is the send part. Where God is telling you, go to where you work, go to your school, go to your neighborhood, go to your family, and tell them about the shepherd who became a lamb. Invite them into the flock, into the community of believers. See, we don't just proclaim Christ. We don't just get on his shoulders so that we can be safe. No, we get on his shoulders so that we can be sent, so that we can make an impact on this valley for Jesus Christ. That's why we need to come to the shepherd. That's why we gather as a body of Christ. So that was our communion meditation. Now for the sermon. Oh, I'm not gonna preach the sermon, you are. Our worship pastors on every campus are gonna to come to stage right now and they're gonna lead you in some worship. It is your voice that is going to proclaim the living Christ. It is your voice that's gonna preach a sermon to all those around you of the goodness of a shepherd. So I wanna invite you right now to stand to your feet and get ready to proclaim the shepherd who became a lamb.
Let's keep it going. Come on. Sing, there is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. And there is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. Yes. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. And there is no army. Oh, with the power to conquer truth, you've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. We believe in faith tonight. Come on. Show me one thing he can't do. Show me a mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough and anything is possible. Advancing at the speed of light And in his kingdom Every dead thing is bound to rise Oh God, our Redeemer He is faithful to revive Oh, he will revive Yeah Show me one thing he can't do Show me In this place as we sing Now all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance I will dance out in faith I will crush disappointment And break every shame Now all of my fear I will turn into praise Shake off despair as I sing out your name A victory dance I will dance out in faith We'll crush the disappointment Is now 
not satisfied to hear in your love. Come on, sing it like you mean it today. Say, the oath is nothing better than you. Oath is nothing better than you. Oath is nothing. Nothing is better. of worship because the great shepherd is with us. Amen. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Y'all are dismissed.